what is up everybody today we have a long overdue video how i got my very first design full-time job after graduation i'm going to walk you through every step that it took me to get there how did i get started what did i say how many rounds of interviews that i went through was challenging so hope this video helps some of you out there who are trying to break into the industry after so many years in school now let's get started and roll the intro Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. I don't have a super structured outline or agenda for this video because the content goes in a fairly linear fashion so I'm just going to go chronologically and I will sprinkle some ideas and opinion here and there where I see fit. Now without further ado, let's dive right into it. As you might know from my other video, I started my first full-time job at DoorDash as a product designer in August 2019 and that is the offer that I'm going to walk you through. This offer started on July 5th on LinkedIn. So I found a head of design at DoorDash and I have attached this very simple note to my connection request. Hi blah blah blah, my name is Justine and I'm reaching out regarding product design opportunities at DoorDash. Thanks. As simple as that. Wait, 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 did anything happen before July 5th that helped lead to this? Any prior setup, engagement, arrangement, or any sort? Ah, great point. There is something. So let me pause for a second and rewind back all the way to April 2019. Let's start from there. I graduated from Art Center in April 2019 and then I went on a small vacation with my friend and my parents in about late April and early May. And while that was happening, I actually started my interview spree. Over the summer of 2019, I interviewed with 23 companies in total and 22 interviews in about four week time span. Well, of course, including the DoorDash interviews. I've also made two separate videos on this. Check them out if you like. They'll be cards up in the corner and description down below. All this meant was that I had already got into a deep mode of interviewing and became very comfortable reaching out to recruiters and hiring managers, which did make things easier as I already knew what to say and did not get too nervous about interviewing. Well, as we all caught up, let's go back to the LinkedIn inbox. So very quickly, I got a response to the connection that I made on the same day. So a tip here is that turn on your LinkedIn notifications so you don't miss any potential opportunity and keep your eyes on it. So the response says, thanks for reaching out. We'll be interested in chatting in person for an hour, blah, blah, blah. We are located in this place. Of course, I responded, that would be great. That will be free all day next Tuesday and Friday. Will any of those days work? And then four minutes later, great, I can meet you either 10 or 11 on Thursday or four to five on Friday, which looks better for you. What's your email address I can send an invite to? And then being the very responsive me, I responded in the next five minutes. I said, how about four to five PM on Friday? And you can reach me at blah, 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 gmail.com. Thanks. Question there. So there are two options. Wouldn't the student option be better? Glad that you asked, although there's only one day difference, but it could actually make a huge difference. Because think about it, 10 a.m. on Thursday is technically pretty early and factoring the commute time because I don't live in SF, I have to take the Caltrain all the way up there. So that would take some time. On the other hand, 45 p.m. is more flexible for me so I can wake up in the morning, get some breakfast, I can rehearse my, my intro, my spiel a little bit more and get my head into the right space before I actually talk to anybody. That would be great. Plus, it's a Friday. Everybody's more chilled and relaxed, so it's easy to talk and communicate. And then, eight minutes later, we'll send you in by later today, see you then. And then I responded, great, thanks. And of course, as you can see, we fairly quickly moved to email. As you know, LinkedIn is not the best communication tool. Just saying. And that concluded the LinkedIn part. So I got a Gmail invite for July 12, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday. We chatted about it for an hour and then I left. So the interview was basically asking about my background, what am I looking for, what they are looking for, which team they were hiring, would I be interested in their driver team, what is my strength, what's my weakness. That is actually a pretty hard question for me because I typically don't think about those things. I focus on just improving myself and just keep going forward, keep going. And I know if I keep going, my strength will get improved and I will reduce some of my weakness, overcome some of my weaknesses. So when this question hit me, I really have to think on the fly. So if you have time to prepare, think about these two questions. And also questions like, what would I think my other designer peers would say about me? Which is fairly the same question as what my strength is, because those two answers should match. I actually also have brought my laptop and that came in handy because I managed to show some of my work from Pinterest and my Waymo internships. Those are fairly quick project showcases 
very conversational. It really feels more like a chat than a formal interview. So that's one hour and we concluded at 5 p.m. After the rest over the weekend on Monday, I got an email. Hi Justine, it's nice to meet you last week. It's the next step, I'd like to speak with blah blah blah, who's one of the product designers leading the Dasher experience. By the way, that was a driver team. You may meet in person again or for the video chat. We'll let you to handle the scheduling from there, which is great. And then next day, I got the email from that designer. Uh, thanks for blah 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 for introduction, move you to BCC. Hi Justine, nice to meet you. Please let me know what type of work to meet in person or video chat. I'm free those days, blah blah blah. And of course, I also responded fairly quickly. Hi, can we meet in person over coffee maybe? How about Thursday, 4 to 5 p.m.? Again, I tend to pick the afternoon time so that I can have more time to prepare and get there. Also, since it's the end of the day, it's more relaxing and chill for them at those times so it's easy for the conversation to begin. Question, why in person? Because video chat is a lot easier, right? You can save some commute time and go right there. Personally, I definitely prefer in person 100%, no question. Reason being, one being I can showcase some nice gestures, let's say hold the door, press the elevator button, if they drop something, I can pick it up for them. Second, because I tend to have some more body gestures, as you can see in this video, as some study shows, hand gestures can help communicate more effectively. And third, I like to bring my laptop so that I can show something on the fly, especially like my portfolio. If something that's not done, but I want to show, I can also show it through there. Uh, and it's easier to point at the same thing on screen, like right next to them, like a real product demo. And if it's a video call, it's really hard to do. Even if you manage to pull that off, it's not gonna be as effective and straightforward as in person. So after all the scheduling, here comes the real twist. We have set up the meeting on July 18th. I've got to San Francisco and I was walking on the piers, getting ready for the interview. And then all of a sudden, a gust of wind just picked up some sand, scratched my eyes, I can't see. More importantly, it ruined my interview. I thought it would be okay because it's common to have things go into your eyes and just blink it out. But it's not the case this time. I found out I cannot look this direction. If I do, my eyes will hurt so badly. So in order to look at that direction, I have to turn my entire head over. So I was looking like an owl the whole time. Not great, so I had to reschedule. That's why I said sorry that I have to reschedule because blah blah blah. And the designer were quite understanding, so we rescheduled that to next time. So while I was waiting for myself to recover, I got some more time to practice on things here and there. And then I sent out an email on July 21st, which is a Sunday. My eyes got a bit better now. Do you have time tomorrow, parentheses, Monday to chat? Will 3 to 5 p.m. work for you? And then I got a response saying that video chat at 3 if I prefer, or in person, there will be two options, Tuesday or Wednesday. 4 to 5 later in the afternoon, and sounds good. So we met on July 24th on Wednesday. We chat about for an hour, mainly talking about who I am, what am I looking for, and my past experience in my internships. We went through a lot more product thinking this time. So my Pinterest internship, I was a product design intern. So what did I do there? How was my design help address some business issue? How would the design that I did help the business? Things like that. And there was also a live quick design exercise. I have to come up with things on the fly. I think it was about designing something for Pinterest, my internship, as a natural extension to that. It's quite an interactive session because the designer was pretending to be a PM and I would be the designer. So we communicate, I would be asking for, oh, can I look at this metric? Can I look at that data? And how that will inform my decision in my design. And then we can go a bit back and forth and exchange ideas and move the design forward that way. To really simulate what is it like to work at DoorDash, for example, or Silicon Valley in general. After my chat with the designer, I sent out an email on July 25th to the hiring manager. It was great to talk to blah 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 yesterday. I didn't know if she got time to sing with you yet, but definitely let me know if you're still hiring for the Dasher app and I'm definitely interested in moving forward. As I keep looking into and using DoorDash more, I'm definitely interested in working with the team. Thanks in advance, sincerely, me. And one note here is that at the same time, I was really using their app to look into what they're working on, what product ideas are there, how do they come up with different features and what are the pros and cons in those. The better I understand the company product and offerings, the better I know where I stand and what I can offer in this potential position. 27 minutes later, I got an email back from the hiring manager. Great to hear that, blah, 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 it went really well. We would like to invite you to an onsite. I'll add our awesome recruiter, blah, 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 to help schedule and coordinate. My gut reaction was like, yes, 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 yes. 
But on the other end, my other brain was like, calm down, calm down, calm down. Because I don't want my excitement or my emotion completely cloud my judgment or to my following on-site interview. So keep calm, there's a great tip there, and celebrate however you want after you get the offer. And then there's a lot of back and forth to try to schedule the time for the on-site. There's a lot of scrolling, a lot of back and forth. At the same time, I got the portfolio presentation prep email separately from the hiring manager. So I got the breakdown for the presentation as well as some interview tips. There's also a Medium article. I think they are great tips and I will link this in the description. Feel free to check it out. And everything was moving along and going pretty well. So I got a Google Calendar invite to the on-site on August 5th from 11 a.m to 3.30, there are five sessions. So now let me try to go through all of them and tell you what each of them means. So 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. portfolio presentation. This is actually not a whole hour for your presentation. It's like a five minute for intro, icebreaker, and then case study on my previous two projects. So two internship projects that I picked. That takes about 40 minutes. Uh, I need to go really deep into the process, explain my design decision. And of course the presentation should be more engaging than just plain text explaining, have a lot of animation, screenshots. I also walk around the room with clickers to demo and really have quite a lot of gestures to convey my idea and concepts. And then five to 10 minutes of the heuristic evaluation of the DoorDash consumer app and why I'm interested in DoorDash and then leave five to 10 minutes for the Q&A. And then the next one, product intuition and stakeholder management. This is essentially interviewing with the PM, the product manager on the same team that I might be working with. So there will be a quick intro about what they do and what I have done in the past. How do I understand product thinking, how designer or how I used to work with product managers if I ever work with them. Product instinct, like product thinking, analytical thinking and the ability to influence stakeholders. So there will be questions like, how do you validate your concept, design concept? How do you know if it works? How do you balance the business needs versus the user's needs? Or how would you define whether this design is successful or this product is successful or not? So questions like that. And then 15 minute break, get some water, go to the bathroom, walk around, stretch your legs. One o'clock to 1.45, lunch, design value. So this session is basically gauging the cultural fit. See if you fit in this team, this, startup vibe, this environment. So we go through things like how well is your communication skills? Are you self-aware? What is your cultural value? What do you see yourself fit in? What is your view on other people? So there'll be questions like, how do you collaborate with others? Um, what kind of culture you're looking for? Have you been learning anything new? What I'm interested in DoorDash about and why I'm interested in those? So things like that. Next one, 1.45 to 2.45, problem solving and design process. So this is a really classic whiteboarding session. There's an hour. I was with two designers on the team. So they would pretend that the product managers will work together to solve a problem. So we will start from the beginning to an end, meaning we will start with a prompt, a really fairly broad prompt, I would say. And then we'll work the way through. Uh, defining what the problem is and then brainstorm different solutions or different ideas and then have a really simple wireframe and in between I can ask as many questions as I like or need to, f to help guide my decision. So for example, I will ask, oh, who will be the target users for, for, for this concept? Whose problem is this? Is it a problem for millennials or is it a problem for older people? Is it a problem for single family household? Who are those and what their mental model, what their behavior is like, what do, where do they live, things like that. So you need to constantly be communicating with them, tell them what you're thinking and have your whole process, all your thoughts laid out on a whiteboard so they can gauge and see how I think, what I did, how I come with a solution. And that will be this interactive session. And then lastly, 2.45 to 3.15, I'll have a final sync with the hiring manager. I thought this would be another interview, but it's basically just talking about going through how my day went, how do I feel about each session, and any last minute question that I have. The hiring manager was not really grilling me questions anymore. It's more about my opportunity to find out more about DoorDash and this role, and what plans they might have in the future or in the coming six months, things like that. And after those five sessions, I was basically dead. It's truly, truly exhausting, but I slept the whole way on the car train, so it was nice. So pro tip there, do not schedule two on-sites on the same day. 
So August 6th, one day after the onset, I got this email from the recruiter. Thank you for taking the time to come in the other day. It was great meeting you in person. Feedback from the team has been really positive so far. As next step, we will grab a couple of references. Where you have two to three handy, please feel free to send them over and we'll work on them ASAP. What it means is that you will send over a list of people, two to three. They're typically your previous managers, especially if you have internships, you definitely have your previous managers. That's why you should be a stellar player at your internship because this is when your relationship with your manager will be helpful. They enjoy working with you. Would they recommend you to others? Not every company will do the reference check, but either case, it's always good to be a good intern. If there's no internship, you can put your professor's name, teachers, mentors. So pro tip, keep their contact. And then August 9th, four days after the onsite, I got the email from the hiring manager. I just say I wanted to reach out to you to inform you the team really enjoy meeting here during the onsite. We think you'll be a very special addition to the team. We are internally going through some approval process, but most likely you'll hear back from us about an offer soon. Stay tuned and have a great weekend. For any questions, feel free to call or email me. Then after the weekend, on July 12th, on Monday, I got an email from the recruiter. Hope you have a great weekend. Do you have a few minutes to jump on a call? Which is typically the offer call. They want to officially congratulate you and basically push you to join ASAP. Let me know what works best. I'm flexible. So hop on the call, we finalize the details, and then I got the offer letter. Bodashing, August 19th, 2019. Blah, blah, blah. This Bodash is pleased to offer you the employment on the foreign terms position. This will be an associate product designer, which is the entry level that you can expect because I just graduated from school. We point you to blah, blah, blah for the position. You get a salary rate of blah, blah, blah. And some company might give you a sign on bonus of some amount. And they will very likely to have stock since you work in Silicon Valley. That is my journey. Every twist and turn that lead to this offer. To turn my story to be more actionable tips, this is what I have for you. The duration of this entire process is from July 5th to August 19th. I would say this is a pretty fast turnaround. Companies typically don't move this fast, so you can use this almost two months as the baseline to plan your interview spree accordingly. Next, the time it took me to prepare the presentation. I have about 100 slides because I do all the proper transition, make sure it's smooth. The content has both depth and also some eye candies. The on-site presentation is about 40 to 45 minutes, which means each time I rehearse my slide deck, it took me 40 to 45 minutes. And I practiced it at least five times, holding the clicker, pacing in the room. So make sure you plan a lot of time into preparing your presentation deck. Make sure to factor that time into when you want to schedule your on-site because the sooner you schedule it, the less time you have to prepare for it. And also account for the time that it takes to polish it, to iterate on it after you rehearse. Next, the prior knowledge and experience helped. I think all the interviews that I did between May and July, it did have a material impact. So hope everything I told you give you a shortcut into your own interview experience. The best practice is a real interview because you will learn a lot, you will grow a lot faster, you will get your mind in the right space, things will flow better and get smoother, become easier, become more natural the more you do it. So after you graduate, you should start interviewing, even though the first couple of companies might not be your dream companies to work at. Lastly, they can actually shovel the headcounts around. Don't let the post that you saw on LinkedIn or their career site stop you. Don't let that five plus experience stop you. If I remember correctly, I knew DoorDash was hiring because they had some senior designer roles open, but of course I was not the senior designer. So I don't want to apply to that because I don't think it would be the great fit. The recruiter would just filter me out. That's why I chose to just reach out to the hiring manager on LinkedIn because if you are a good fit or you are a good designer that they see value in you, they can allocate a senior designer headcount to you. Plus an associate designer or a new grad designer is a lot cheaper to hire than a senior one. So that's a plus on their business side. But still, the baseline is your work and portfolio need to be solid enough to make the case. So what do you guys think? Does that make sense? Does my journey help shed some light on how you think about the hiring process in Silicon Valley? and maybe give you some guidance on what actions to take as the next step. If you have any question regarding this or any topic suggestions, feel free to leave a comment down below. 
That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a very small channel, so every like counts, and I will greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, consider smash that subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!